Matthew chapter number 5 verse 9. Matthew chapter number 5 verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Peacemaker. Je Jesus said the peacemaker is blessed. And if you're going to be a peacemaker, you have to have the knowledge how to obtain peace. And uh, I will say this, not everyone knows how to make peace, but not everybody knows how to handle problems, trials, tribulations, conflicts, miscommunications. And if you're going to be a peacemaker, you got to learn how to make peace. 1 Corinthians 1.10 Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you, shall, that you all speak the same thing, and there be no division among you. What does that mean? There's people on one side, people on the other. But that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, the same judgment, for it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Cleo, that you are, there are contingents among you. He tells them who started the fight. He says, listen, I've been hearing about your church, Corinthian church. Cleo's been telling me there's division in the house of God. There's problems. He said in uh, Corinthians 1, uh, 12, Now this I say that every one of you say, I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus, I'm Cephas, I'm Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? We see here in Scripture there is, there is division. There is allegiance. Some of the Corinthian church members say, Well, you know, I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus, I'm a, I'm a Cephas, I'm a Baptist, I'm a, I'm a Catholic, you know, I'm a Methodist, uh, I'm an independent uh, fundamental Baptist, uh, I'm non-denominational, you know, uh, everybody's got somebody, you know, and they're all divided. We are Christians and we're not supposed to be divided, we're all supposed to be on one side, that's Christ's side. There are some folks uh, saying the same, uh, do the same thing today, that they're divided. Uh, there are some Christians uh, that, are, that are loyal, more loyal to TV preachers, radio preachers, traveling preachers than their own church, than their own pastor. And uh, I'll say this, uh, there are some really better pastors out there than me, uh, better preachers than me. they got more year experience, more preaching skills, more teaching skills, but they ain't got nothing loyal to the church. Uh, you want Danny Farley as your pastor? Uh, bye. You know, uh, you want to go to uh, East River? Bye. You want to go to Johnny Ortiz? Bye. You know, ain't, ain't nobody stopping you. Uh, we don't want division. We want people that are going to say we are behind our pastor even uh, with the faults he has. You want jo Joel Osteen as your pastor. Well, you need help, but back. David and Absalom, that's the father and his son, and uh, people would show up to Jerusalem and... Uh, they wanted to see the king. But Absalom was outside and he won the people over by meeting them and saying, you know, you got this big problem and if I was king, I'd take care of it for you. No problem. You know, if I, if I was in charge, there'd be no problems. You know, you ought to make me king one day. You know, you think about that. All right. Oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. Oh, isn't that sweet of the king's son? I'd help you, and the, and the people started swaying to, to Absalom, the country split. It happens in churches, it happens at work, it happens in families. 
people will divide allegiance over programs, events, projects, ministry, money. <coughs> Conflicts sometimes arise over authority. Pastor's supposed to be in charge of the church. Husband's supposed to be in charge of the family. Good luck with some women there. I can tell you that right now. I got a good wife. She uh, makes sure my clothes is clean. She makes sure I got something to eat. She makes sure and tells me when I need a haircut. Uh, she tells me and, and helps me. And uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. her being by my side all these 30 plus years. It's going to probably be, uh, uh, I believe it's 37 or 36 years. 36 years. Matthew 20, 25. But Jesus called unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. What's a minister? Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. That's what a minister is. He's a servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. The pastor's job is to minister to his people, not hurt his people. Brother Jack always said, you know, a young, a young preacher is uh, quick to pull out his sword because he wants to show everybody, I'm good with my sword and I can cut you up and blood will fly everywhere. When I was a young pastor, I did that. I cut people, ran them off, and, uh, you know, uh, all young pastors have to do it. He also said old preachers have a hard time pulling out that sword. They know there's some things wrong in their church, but they refuse to pull out the sword because they know if they pull out the sword, there's going to be blood. And there might be, somebody might just leave. So it takes a good man a young man, not, not a young man, but a, a well-aged man to be able to handle it. I cannot handle uh, more than three services, Sunday school uh, service, midweek service, and that's it. I can't handle night service. Uh, Sunday night, you can forget it. I'm too old. I just can't do it. I'm too old. A pastor, uh, uh, you know, that, that wants to be in charge and wants to have dominion over you, that, that's not good. You know, what kind of car you ought to buy, where you ought to live, where you ought to go, what you ought to wear. That's not, that's not a pastor. pastor's job is to preach God's Word. My job is not to pick what you need to wear, uh, how you're supposed to act. That, that's not my job. That's God's job. God's supposed to speak to you. Uh, the Bible. Read your Bible. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Our job as Christians is to uplift the Savior to be a blessing to others, not to put them in their place, not to put them under our thumb. As husbands, we're supposed to minister to our family and not just uh, uh, boss them around. Anyone that tells another Christian they can't worship the Lord uh, is wrong. You, you ought to be able to worship God. Worship God wherever you want to. Moses was having all kinds of people come to him. They'd stand in line all day, all night. His father-in-law finally came to him gave him some advice. He said, why don't you get somebody to help him? He said, get a guy in charge of a thousand guys, and then get another guy in charge of a hundred guys, get another guy in charge of the fifty guys, and get another guy in charge of the ten guys. And if the guy with the ten guys can't handle it, he gives it to the guy with the fifty. And if he can't handle it, he gives it to the guy with the hundred. And if he can't handle it, then they finally bring it to you. That's called leadership. Leadership. The big problem. Sometimes conflicts happen because nobody is in charge and nobody knows what to do. And in uh, Acts 6, 1, and in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose 
murmuring of the Grecians. What they started doing? Murmuring. Murmuring is complaining. Who were they complaining against? Against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve disciples, the twelve called uh, the multitude of, of, of the disciples unto them and said, Is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. A pastor's job is not to mow the grass. But when there ain't nobody out to mow the grass, guess what? He has to mow the grass. I mow the grass, I don't know how long. Because nobody else would do it. The Grecians were complaining, murmuring. Hey, our widows, they ain't getting enough stuff, you know. Y'all serving more food to the uh, Hebrew women than you are ours. Uh, we're being overlooked. Communists, by the way, that was the communist way. That was the church. They tried communist. It didn't work. Let's all share our money and share everything equally. Well, let me tell you this. It don't work. The apostles took action. They prayed. They got seven men to take over, overlook the people. Somebody's got to be in charge. Somebody's got to be in charge. Somebody's got to be in charge. And some folks uh, will have problems with those.